Hey, what is going on, everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and welcome back to another episode of Mario's Minute. In case you do not know, this is a podcast I do every single month near the end of the month. I've been doing this for well over three years now, just over three years at this point, where I talk about really whatever the hell I want to. Sometimes I have a guest on, sometimes I don't. I've done a really good job of rotating that out every other month, and this month we do have a guest here. But before we get to that, if you are looking to listen to more Mario's Minute, either in the past, present, or future, if you want to check out those episodes, you can find it in two different ways. First of all, you can find it on the Mr. Mario 2011 YouTube channel in video form. It's just kind of an image with a cool little visualizer there. At least I think it looks cool, so we have that going on. Or you can take this around with you like an actual podcast. Look up Mario's Space Minute all in, well, just how that's set up there. Look up Mario's Minute on your favorite podcasting platform, and you'll be able to listen to it there, hopefully wherever you can, if you're going many places, or if you're just hanging out around your house or apartment or room, wherever the hell you are. Anyways, as I always ask here, to my guest, who the hell are you? Hi, uh, I'm Casey. I make videos about games sometimes, and uh, that's all I really know how to say. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that works out. I, I think that's enough. <laughs> Anyways, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing just fine. Uh, thank you very much for having me on. How are you doing? Oh, no problem. I'm doing pretty well here. I know I've just been, uh, we were talking about this a little bit before the show, but I, I think both of us have just been busy until we like literally ran on here to do this. So mm -hmm. I'm glad we were able to get synchronized, but it's been, it's been a busy day kind of running around everywhere. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, to anybody who doesn't know who you are or what you might cover, uh, I, I guess I, I don't ever want to talk about someone else's content like I really know it as well as they do. But how would you describe what you do? Um, I like here's the thing is I kind of let like whatever <laughs> I feel like working on. I think I think is interesting to go find out about direct what I work on. So a lot of it is weird video game ports. Like I do lots of handheld ports or like last generation ports of stuff or D makes. Uh, but I don't know if something is interesting. I'll just, you know, f find out what story there is behind it and tell that story in an entertaining way if I can. Uh, and that's what I've kind of let guide me. So uh, my favorite stuff I've done has been like uh, the old last gen Need for Speed games. Uh, I recently did like a Connect uh, rail shooter. That was fun. Uh, yeah. So stuff like that. And mm. uh, right now I'm working on a uh, Hot Wheels thing, which I'm very excited about. So. Oh, OK. OK. Is there any other hints you can give about that or not right now? Um, I've, I've kind of teased it a bit on, on uh, the community tab already. So it's mostly just uh, they did a bunch of series of movies way back when. Uh, yeah. that had like this connected universe and i think that's really interesting and people kind of forgot about it so I, i'm gonna get in touch with the guy that made it uh and oh, find out awesome. some stuff that does all like the uh, all the games and all the uh comics and stuff like that so it's gonna be a fun time awesome awesome I, i'm looking forward to that uh i know i myself i did find uh actually because i was just looking through your channel here and i think the the very first thing i ever saw from you was actually about ports it was your uh counter-strike go uh console port video that was a very fun video to make. Yes, I'm. Just, are the servers still up on that right now? Like uh, February 2021. I haven't played it in a while. Uh, I think the PS3 ones are gone, but I I believe the 360 servers are still up because it's part of the Xbox One back and pat. But uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm hoping that I can maybe find a way to get the PS3 version working again because I recently got a PS Move. And oh, right, yes, right. it supports that for some reason. So if I'm, <laughs> I would really much like it to see how that plays with other people. But v Valve did really weird shit when they were on the consoles. Like not even to demean it by any means, but just like from what I know, like Half Life was pretty impressive on consoles. Half Life Two barely ran, but it ran. And then you know o Orange Box and such. But like the I never knew about the move functionality on CS:GO. They had a lot of really weird ideas they wanted to chase down, and it seems like it half the time didn't work out. Like, they <laughs> just... It, it's weird how they flip-flopped from absolutely hating Sony from, like, 2007 to 2010 to making Portal 2 have Steam functionality exclusively on, on PS3. Uh, I, I do remember that, yeah. I remember uh, Gabe Newell, like, just straight up bashing the PS3 and talking about, like, how bad it was and such. And then, like, literally the next release right after uh, the Orange Box, uh, he was 
they were all on board with Portal 2 because I think Portal 2, like it, it linked with Steam directly. And if you bought on PS3, they gave you a PC copy as well, didn't they? Yeah, they gave you a PC copy and it was also cross play for um, the co op, which was really cool. But mm-hmm. it's, it, yeah, like you said, it's wild because when the orange box was happening, um, I remember they delayed at the last minute the PS3 version by a month. And on the launch day of the 360 and, PS, uh, and PC version, uh, when they announced the delay for uh, the PC version, or the, sorry, the PS3 version like a week earlier, on launch day of the other versions, Gabe was saying, yeah, the PS3 is trash. It's, a, it's an absolute waste of everybody's time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it came out and that port was pretty terrible. Like... I I've, I was playing it recently, and I was gonna make a video about it, but I just haven't gotten gotten the uh, time to really sink my teeth into all three of the games in it. But it uh basically it has really weird bugs, like everything is slightly higher pitched on PS3 for Half Life. What? So like like the listen, audio? Yeah. So you listen to like the G Man speech, and you know I've been playing Half Life Two for fifteen years, so like I've got it burned into my brain, sure. and it sounds like the Alvin and the Chipmunks that rise and shine, Mister Free. It's it's just what the hell? <laughs> and like yeah, all I... like the pistol sound effects are really high pitched. It's really weird if you've never played it. If you've, if you've played that game before, I've played. So I I've played Half Life Two. Like I actually played on three sixty on the orange box, of course, but I didn't know about that. Uh, the one obscure thing i knew about the orange box was i want to say it was on 360 and there was uh there was tile updates that were coming out of course and there was like 1.0 that was the base version and there was 1.01 and 1.02 came out and the fixes were mainly for uh team fortress 2 and apparently something didn't roll out properly with the update so the end result was if you popped the game into your console or if you bought it digitally if you fired it up you would get prompted for an update, you would download 1.02, and you'd play online with no issue. But if you had the disc-based version, and you did not remove it from your system since the update went out, you would not be prompted for the update. So you had people on two different update versions that were playing online together. That's really, really weird. And and, and like, let them play together? It it let them play. Yeah, there was was no check to see, hey, you're on the tile update 1.02. It was no just allowing it because for some reason, the only way it would force a tile update if you had a disk version is after the update came out. If you took the disk out of your system and put it back in, even for a second, then it would prompt it. But if you and I knew several people like this when they got the orange box, they only play that for like a month. So they weren't prompted for that update. That's absolutely wild, and it's it's really funny to think that even with a game that only got two patches, that they still managed to have patch-related issues. Jeez, I, I, I thought it would have been more. It was really only two? It was something like two or three. I think the PS3 actually got one less patch than the 360, but yeah, I think the issue is that, um, for one thing, EA did the PS3 version. Uh, mm-hmm. Like an EA studio that was mostly responsible otherwise for like PSP games, did the PS3 version and cocked it up big time. Um, and for the 360 version, Microsoft wanted to charge a lot of money for every title update. Yes, yeah, and... that was a, that was a big sticking point for especially a lot of indie developers. Yeah, and then Valve just was not on board with that. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of wild to look back at th- that entire era of early 360 and PS3 stuff, where they swore off the the PS3 entirely, and they made Left for Dead was on 360 but not PS3 at all, neither game, mm-hmm. and then the the uh controversy over left 4 dead 2's dlc which was free on pc microsoft made them make it paid or uh, they would charge was, them so much money that was the first one i believe uh because the first one only got one dlc but yeah it was like seven bucks on 360 and free on pc right and then i think that might have been what soured them on the console for the portal 2 thing where the portal 2 got uh got ps3 exclusive content and the 360 didn't it's just really interesting that they've since basically sworn off consoles yeah yeah because it's even i mean well now at this point there's practically no reason for them to go back and you know dust off their 360 dev kits and push out updates and such but all of those games as well too just get locked in this odd subspace of like they're still online and that's the latest update but they're super outdated so in a way they're kind of fun to play and experience for people who play like team fortress 2 on pc constantly and they go to the 360 version they're like holy shit this is so old this is awesome awesome yeah and those are the communities that have popped up around the ps3 version that still play it uh and i think that's really cool i think it's cool that that uh you know there was that tf 2007 project that got i think it got shut down where it was people that were basically 
making a mod that was going to restore TF2 to before all of the item updates and all the all, all the crafting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that got shut down. So as far as I know, it's really the only way to play vanilla TF2. And the same thing goes for CS uh, CSGO, where like the old maps that were pre the redesigns that just basically look like CS source maps. Those are all still playable on console, but not PC. And it's it's interesting from a preservation standpoint that mm-hmm. we can just go back and have this pseudo official way to play these games without having to modify them yeah i i would agree on that even if it's pretty much like hey we left these games in the dirt and they're completely outdated but it's interesting to experience that yeah it's it's weird to go back and play csgo on console after playing you know however many thousand hours on pc and still hear the phantom footsteps and like oh my god i'm getting <laughs> getting like 2014 <laughs> flashbacks <laughs> i do remember when uh when csgo came out on 360 because i was like so uh uh, my the most extensive Counter Strike I've played was 1.6, and it was like I was hanging out with family in Jordan, like the country Jordan, and we would mm. go to land centers and play it there and have a fun time. Like those were great days. That was a really fun experience. But I knew about you know the precision and how it was set up with keyboard and mouse and such. I wasn't great by any means, but like I just knew it wouldn't it, it, it wouldn't be a console game or one it's something i'd want to play on there so i remember even when that came out some of my friends were like oh dude you gotta pick up this game cs go it's so good i'm like i am not playing this on 360 hell no like i i'll play it on pc but not on 360 it's really strange because that game started as a console port for cs source and then it became its own thing and it became pc focused halfway through interesting and it, it, st- it ended up being a way less console friendly experience than a game uh, that you'd expect uh, to not be, which was uh, the port of Condition Zero that was just called Counter Strike on Xbox uh, for the original Xbox. Yes, 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 yes. That yeah. port was actually really good. It was. It was. Uh, I, I don't know too much of behind the scenes technical stuff about it, but at least like to me playing it, it feels a lot more tweaked for the platform than just a straight port of 1.6. And I thought it worked really well. And it's, it's, it's weird to see that, that game was uh, so much better to play than go on consoles, even if you have to, at this point, get to get people together in person or on Kai to make it happen. Sure, sure. And I'm not even sure how popular that would be on Xbox, Kai, like on, on X-Link Kai. You definitely have to arrange people to do it. I've okay. done it a couple times with, uh, there's a couple discords that play those games still. Uh, and I've done it a couple times. It's very finicky with the ping, so you have to have find someone that's relatively central to host it. But it's not a bad time. It's just definitely not as intended, you know? Sure, sure. And that's what happens when you do land tunneling and such. I, I think about a year ago, I actually did. I tried X-Link Kai, and it was actually, I've never really messed with it, surprisingly. But I was, you know, trying to connect with people who have messed with it. And none of us, like none of the three of us were really having any luck with it. And we were all on a 360. So we were trying for like an hour on it, I remember. And then we finally tried, the game we were trying to play was compatible on Link. And we said, screw it, let's just try Link. And all I know is that within five minutes, we had it working on Link and it was working as intended. So Kai is still kind of, <laughs> it's good and bad in a way. It's kind of like these ports that we're talking about, these console ports where it, it never really progressed. Like even if you go to the website, it just looks like something like straight out of 2008. Right. It, like I, I, in my early days, confused it with XB Connect, which that's a throwback. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes 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 i think that came first didn't it yeah xp connect i believe was first but they were both like period like they came out during the xbox's lifespan i do and, remember uh, yeah you were trying to play 360 games with it correct yes uh i believe that uh 360 games have that ping limit uh it does the 30 millisecond ping but we had ping patch enabled and everything mm. i i just know we were doing everything we you were supposed to and it wouldn't work and we were having these weird connection faults and issues and then uh we went over to link which is it's a lot nicer because it's actually like if you use the aurora dashboard on a mod mm-hmm. 360 it's all integrated in there so it makes the there there is some tweaking you have to do but once you get it all set up like it just works pretty damn well I've not had the pleasure of using it yet. I, I've literally got my first modded 360 on Friday, so it's been about, Ooh, about four days. Yeah, it's very fun. I bought a pre-built one, which I know is not what's usually recommended, but I just... No, no, you know, I, I know you you might be saying that because you're talking to me here, but like, no, that's what I recommend to people. I'm just like, unless you're really into this and you're wanting to do it multiple times, just pay someone to do it or buy one that's pre-built. Yeah, I bought it from this dude on eBay and uh, just 
just oh, okay. looking at the well, time because it's okay. his, it, yeah <laughs> that, that yeah okay. that's not the best i did it because i was like you know what i don't know where to go with this but i found like an okay deal on it and i was like all right i would say i don't think you need another one but next time you, you could have just hit me up there like hey what installers are good and i could point you to a few <laughs> It, it, you know it, it ended up okay uh like i don't i'm not so big a fan of like some of the default mods and he was obviously like someone that's that's gearing it towards the people who want to play cod mods online of course uh so like it's got every every call of duty game and menu under the sun pre-installed so i deleted all that crap i'm not interested in that but um you know it, it, it was it's not been a bad purchase so far i just had to do some tweaking and you know replace all of the, the default add-ons and all the gaudy customizations with stuff i want for it but sure sure uh w- one thing just throw this back a little bit i did while we we're talking about this i actually i gotta take this back i looked at the uh, the x-link kai site and it got a beautiful makeover that must have been in like the last two months because i i, I... <laughs> I guess so, yeah, because it like it looks modern, it looks great, it's beautiful. Like this, this, this looks great. Oh, and it has like a wiki page too, if you go to the wiki. But oh yeah, wow, no, oh oh, but here's this. Okay, and anybody listening, you can do this. You can go to teamxlink.co.uk now. Casey, click on the download link, and it would take you to the old style website. And if you <laughs> click on download, that is what it used to look like. That's what I was saying. It looks like some straight out of 2007. That's very funny. That is a brand new home home page, and uh, it, it's it's funny looking in the download link because I have it up on my 4K monitor, and it's not set to scale for 4K monitors or anything mm-hmm. larger than like 800 mm-hmm. by 600. So everything is I can't even read the top button. Those yeah, like good. that. That's when you had to. I mean, that was like the era of websites where it would say like, "Hey, it is recommended you look at this website at like 1280 by 600 or oh, something." God. Like that. Unearthing memories I didn't know I had. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm good at i suppose <laughs> no, yeah. it's it's very it's a very good uh tool and program for playing old games i've i've gotten um i've been using it for, for xbox stuff for years i used to moderate a uh, community that did uh halo 2 stuff almost every weekend but uh oh, wow that that was pretty cool and i've done other xbox games and i got a psp working on it not too long ago congratulations um, played some gran turismo psp together that was really fun um yeah, it's a really nice program. It's just a little bit finicky to get some of the less popular devices or more, more newer devices set up with sure, it. Sure, sure. And I, I would say that's valid as well, too, because you're also doing something you're not supposed to, which is, oh, I don't know, using local area <laughs> network and boosting it across the world. Like, right. it's really cool that we can do this and we've pretty much mastered it. But it's like, I'm also going to acknowledge it's going to be a little finicky because we're doing shit that we're not supposed to here. Yeah, especially because uh, when, when it's a niche community like Halo 2, you can pretty much find someone for that from any corner of the globe uh that's really popular in south america still like if you go on <laughs> yeah literally any given time there will be at least one or two lobbies in south america going mm-hmm. uh and, but and i'm and i was laughing not even to any insult there it's just like it's just funny that and you know what there there are people i'm just uh, kind of called to action with a comment here there are people i know who listen to this who are from south america if you could explain why halo or halo 2 over x link kai is so popular in south america i would love to know because i I just know that it is and it's been like that for like 10 years yeah i remember even back in the xb connect days i remember trying to get it working and i was i mean i was like 11 or 12 trying to figure it out but like all i could find were games in south america which is okay but it's like the ping is a little bit less less than ideal yes. um and it's the only reason i know the spanish word for slayer <laughs> it's because the... <laughs> I, like, I, I, I saw it on a car the other day i was like why do they have slayer in spanish on their car it's like oh my god all of that stuff i did at 11 or 12 really helped me out now yeah yeah um i i do remember back then though uh and back then as in like you know or, or early aughts is what it is like early to mid around that time it was funny because x-link kai and xb connect they weren't even looked at as um like straight uh, just straight up like this is what you have to use to do to play these games it was very much looked at as i don't want to pay 50 dollars for xbox live per year because screw paying for online service i'm just going to do this free thing yeah and that's uh it's, it's kind of funny that it became from this underground thing where it was like a way to circumvent paying to a literal necessity and it's unfortunate that it being birthed as a uh, way to circumvent paying means that 360 stuff is much, much harder to uh, play online through it. Because yeah, as yeah. games servers disappear, it's hard to... It's, there's a lot of games that you literally just cannot play online anymore. Like, a lot of 360 games didn't even bother with System Link anymore. Yep. Uh, 
Um, I remember uh, the PS3 uh, Gran Turismo community recently managed to restore a hidden um, land mode that wasn't available in the retail game, but they used it for ter- uh, tournaments and stuff in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, they managed to restore that to the game. And so you can play Gran Turismo 5 uh, online through Kai, uh, even though it's no longer possible, but you have to have a modded system and a modded install of the game or else it won't work. So that is beautiful. It's, it's and... awesome that it's possible again. It's just kind of depressing that it, we have to go there. I would I would agree with that, yeah. And I like I I love modding. I love think that's pretty obvious. Don't get it wrong here, but yeah, it is really disappointing. Where it's like, oh well, this is kind of what we have to do if we want to play these games. Uh, I know. Uh, have you followed Insignia at all for the original Xbox? Uh, I follow it here and there when they make announcements. I've not read too much about their latest progress though. Okay, okay, and I I haven't looked at it either. But I mean, in in short, for people who don't know, it's really a uh, open well. Well, I guess clean room reverse engineering re-implementation of original Xbox Live. And the main thing they're trying to get up and working again is going to be Halo 2. So really, I'm sure the idea will be that a lot of people are going to be getting off of XP Connect and X-Link Kai, and they'll be using Insignia. The nice thing will be with that, they're trying to hopefully set it up so that you will need to like go online you'll need to read a guide because there's there's things that can't be changed like part of the xbox live setup process is you do have to put in a credit card and all that which they're going to say like hey just put in like all c's or all fives whatever it is we're not going to take don't put in real information um but that that will be available on both modded systems and stock systems and even if you have a modded system like for example if you have a system with a nulled out d uh hard drive key that's all zeros you're going to actually have to do a mod where you have to change that to i believe all ones is acceptable not all zeros but all ones is fine or it needs to be a random set of numbers and letters but that will be nice because you'll be able to do it on a completely unmodified system yeah, and you can do, you can do a land tunneling on a modified system, but like uh, the problem with all of these methods, regardless of console, is that the average person that just says, "Oh yeah, I remember playing," you know, this this obscure Xbox game online in two thousand three or uh, two thousand four, is going to say, and they're not going to know that Kai is a thing, or they're not going to go through the effort of getting it set up, troubleshooting, finding people from around the world that want to play it, because it's just so much work especially if you're not familiar with it. So yeah. uh, I, I think that it's awesome to see stuff like Insignia is bringing back what is still going to be some amount of effort to get set up, but it's going to be a lot simpler than the current methods, and it's hopefully going to work better. Because um, mm-hmm. there are games that even with uh, even on the original Xbox have ping limits or have issues with higher ping, like Counter-Strike is one of them. It does not play well in higher ping. Oh, and there course. are some games where if it's over, I think if it's like over 100, it'll boot you. And over 100 oh, okay. is not is not very high uh, for people playing across oceans like we we have the people that run the server are in australia and the people that uh play in it are from all over so it's interesting to see that they're bringing insignia back and i hope to see that yes. move forward soon yeah you're right on there yeah yeah but i i've seen some progress on there where i know uh mega salt is working i believe mm-hmm. unreal tournament 2003 is working and like they're working isn't like you can actually get in game you can play multiplayer like it it looks to be pretty exciting i'm really especially after we've seen so many teases and so many projects come up and then get shut down not like from microsoft but just like they get shut down internally so it's really awesome seeing something coming to some solid fruition yeah, because I remember when I first got into, uh, into original Xbox modding back in 2017, I remember reading about previous attempts to reverse engineer live that just fizzled out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad that this one's getting, this is probably the most progress we've seen. It's still enclosed. I don't think you can you can get into it without an invite still. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, and I'd love to get an invite to it, but uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. But <laughs> it, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's very exciting times, and I'm hoping that they'll expand the list, because especially for racing games, that's like such a big generation of racing games, and a lot of the ones that everybody loved mm-hmm. don't have System Link. Like, none of the Need for Speed games from that era have System Link, because EA just did not believe in that. They just didn't that's right, yeah. I, I never remember seeing it as an option. Yeah, EA just, none of their games have it, and uh, a lot of the older ones, the only way to play it online is to uh, do Game Ranger on PC, and that's real finicky because that software is way, way out of date. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was when, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking too, that was when EA was extra shitty as well. Yeah, it, it was it was real rough. Like, I, I know that um, th- the way we actually play Underground 1 online, like the Need for Speed Underground 1, is uh, mm-hmm. PS1 server, or sorry, PS2 servers that uh, fans run. 
they use a oh, custom okay. DNS, and it just so happens they're somehow managed to make it cross platform. So you're playing PS2 people on PC, and it's still it's very janky, but it, it's exciting to think that maybe one day we'll have live support back for that. Yeah, but that's really dope, though. If you're able to play PS2 and PC together, that's really impressive. Yeah, and, and there is lots of issues with getting it to work. And I remember, like, I've had to, uh, I've had to make sure I have a VPN on because I'm still living on a college campus, and the, for whatever reason, the ports on campus do not like uh, the custom DNSs for the. Uh, for the ps2 stuff so i have to i have to put a vpn on to get it to even work but yeah no they do not i remember living on a college campus and like it was it, it, it was beautiful because like that the connection is really nice i'm not i'm not sure how your connection is but like i had like a hard like at, at the time this was i mean even if i was in newer construction it'd be it would be better but at the time it was great because i had just solid like my ping was fine but it was 100 up and down constant yeah it used to be better uh because like when i first moved in here we had wired internet uh and it and i was real real solid it's fiber uh basically i, didn't, I never got full fiber speeds but i got pretty damn close and it was sure. really nice uh but then uh, at one point i had to move out and back in for a summer because of uh construction and I came back, and they had turned off all the Ethernet ports in the entire complex, oh, and they've no. moved to wired only. So I've got my own little workaround with a router in my room where I can at least, like, FTP devices and do things that don't have Wi-Fi. But everything has to go through my uh, desktop computer's Wi-Fi card, which is less than less than ideal. Sure. And it's not the fastest or the most reliable in the world. But hey, it's not bad. It, it certainly could be worse. And it's part of my rent. So I'm like, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was uh, and, and they can't go in and like enable it for you, even if you ask. No, because the the thing was, is it was it was a complex at the time I moved into it, it was a complex. Uh, it's, like, it's an apartment complex and they owned it was owned by a, another company and the school bought it out. And okay. as part of their uh, renovations and they bought it out is what they uh, they converted all of the uh networking from a local company to uh their own networking so they used the wiring for a little bit for the wire for the uh, school fiber but then they removed it and that, that the, the jump to school fiber was great because it was going from like 25 down to 500 down mm -hmm. but then it was now it's like i might get 50 or 100 depending on the day that's annoying because it, it, oh, it's especially annoying because like you had it before and then it was taken away from you. Yeah, it made it made uh, doing original Xbox stuff online real difficult. It made uh, lots of stuff kind of difficult. I couldn't use my 360 for a while because I had the uh, the original fat model without the Wi-Fi card. Mm -hmm. um, and I can only have five devices on the guest network, which is for most people fine. But when you've got this whole arsenal of old game consoles, yes, yes, that, that's a bit frustrating. But y yes. <laughs> it's okay I'm, I'm, I'm almost done this is my last year of college i'm moving out and getting the house with my girlfriend and some friends this year so congratulations to, that sounds yeah, awesome very excited and gonna get my own network and administrate it myself and be very very happy with it oh my god yeah no that is a freeing feeling when you're able to do that and you're completely away from the school's clutches and you can set it up however you want you can go with whatever isp as as long as you as long as it's in the area that you're being serviced with yeah, and, and I'm I'm living in a uh, I'm living in Jacksonville, so it's a pretty large city. So I've got some amount of options. So that's sure. that's nice. I, I'm very excited about you know just having the freedom to configure my network and have a bigger office space than what I currently have. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure you're probably going to do this, but like when I was looking at the last probably four or five places I've moved, I always look at the internet there. Like yeah. whether it is a house or it's an apartment, I look up the address and see what internet runs through here, what service providers run. Okay, the shitty one is here. Are there any good ones? All right, <laughs> there's no good ones. I'm not interested in this house. Yeah, you want to make sure you don't get stuck with some old uh local company that's still got really really slow stuff because that, that's what that was the situation here is they just had some old uh some old wires from this company that had been servicing the complex since it was built uh mm -hmm. and it was just they never upgraded it so it, it's definitely like a, some, something to consider but hopefully uh we're moving over to like the other side of the river where it's uh, hopefully not going to be too much of an issue but who knows right on yeah just uh yeah just just literally look at everything not only like shower <laughs> pressure and such but also like internet hookups and uh cell phone service as well too that's really important yeah the, the cell phone service service here sucks and if my wi-fi goes out then i'm just kind of like hello i can't i can't, I can't reach anybody <laughs> are you are you in like a i guess if you don't mind me asking are you in like an older like brick building or what no it's a somewhat modern apartment building but i'm in okay. the middle floor so it's like i have people above me and i'm and below me and i think it's just i don't know just something to do with the way this uh 
complex was built. I have okay. no idea why it would be bad, but okay, okay, gotcha. There's an alligator somewhere, and there's Florida man and all that, so I get it. <laughs> there are alligators in our lake. It's a bit, it's a bit scre- <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say far away from there. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, is that everybody that's not from Florida is afraid of them, and they're just like, ah, I won't want to be anywhere near them. And it's like you see them; they're just, they're just minding their business. <laughs> they just don't do anything. Yeah, as long as you don't bother them. Like, obviously, you're not going to go walk over and say hello to them, but you're not going to like, you know, they're just kind of a fact of life here. Okay. um yeah we've got gators we've got snakes we've got all kinds of things and yeah we're like a little mini australia and we're just kind of used to it <laughs> a mini australia i've never heard of that yeah I, i've just heard of us being america's australia because we've got everything that wants to kill you between the the, the meth heads and the, the animals i mean so. you're, you know i've never heard this but you're certainly not wrong like with the description there you are not wrong at all yeah like when i was a kid i remember stumbling across rattlesnakes in our backyard like it was just a thing that would happen. I, I would. I remember uh, one of the hurricanes, like in oh four oh five. I was a kid. I was like seven. Mm-hmm. We went um, to a hotel because my dad needed to do work for uh, business, for like his business, and he needed power. And we didn't have power for like a week, so we went to the hotel. And I remember getting out of the car and stepping on a pygmy rattlesnake, <laughs> <laughs> and that was scary. Are you um, kidding? No. So yeah. Oh my Flor- god. Florida is not the most. Uh, friendly environment for humans i don't think no. we're meant to live here no and i isn't that why miami is going to be drowning <laughs> well that's just because of global warming and the sea level rising supposedly but yeah but also i mean maybe it shouldn't have been inhabited i don't know <laughs> yeah well, florida used to be underwater once upon a time supposedly that's what i was told us in elementary school i don't know if that's true um but yeah it's it's between the weather and the eventual uh sea level and the animals it's just not the best place to be but you know a few more years i'll hopefully get to escape it i want to go to the west coast where it's not you know the sun doesn't try to melt me during during the summer gotcha gotcha (laughs) gotcha. yeah no it's uh look at uh you know what when it comes to that as well too uh even just places to move and such look at internet there too because um and i say that not not just as like a preachy thing but it's like there's a lot of companies like in these expensive places like the east coast and west coast where with them going almost all remote at this point there's like hey we don't have to have super expensive like shoebox apartments in the middle of silicon valley you don't have to live this way we can live like kings in the middle of missouri and get pretty solid internet right yeah we were considering like uh like we've always talked about washington state just because we think it's pretty um mm-hmm. and that's one of the things there's like god the housing market right now it's a good time to go find somewhere to live but in a couple of years when people have realized oh we don't need apartment we don't need office buildings we can just have people work from home it saves them and us a lot of money then it's just going to be a lot more expensive especially for internet and for housing so i I, i'm worried about that but here's hoping it doesn't get to be too bad or at least i'll be settled by the time it does yeah it's actually interesting you say that because um maybe maybe it hasn't been in the areas you've looked or like where you're at but i've actually seen what you were describing that's been happening right now where the past year especially the past like six nine months or so uh there's a lot of people who just like the housing market is excellent if you're trying to sell but if you're trying to buy you're probably going to have to overpay for what you're looking for or if you find something you like you pretty much have to decide that day if you want to commit to it or not because it's going to go off the market (laughs) Yeah, so thankfully, it seems like uh, cause we're still renting for right now. We're not quite ready to buy a house. We're, we're all finishing college or finished college recently. So we're of not course, ready to like, buy. So I think that renting a house is going to be our plan. And the renter's market right now in Jacksonville, at least, is really, really good. Like There are four or five bedroom houses in really nice neighborhoods for $1,600, $1,700 a month, which split four ways upon adults working jobs. That's not bad at all. No, no, um, no, especially so, like apartments here are like almost that for a two bedroom sometimes. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really not a bad deal, and I feel like getting into a longer term rental is going to be really good for us as a step towards not living in apartments intended for college students when we finally want to break away from that sort of living. Because mm-hmm. I don't know it's it, it really sucks having all your furniture in your office slash bedroom touch because you're you just outgrown the space. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the that's the little situation i'm in right now i've got like my little racing wheel nook in the corner that's touching my bed that's touching my desk and it's just uh if it's real cramped 
I totally get that. Um, but that's also, I mean, because I, I, I've been through college as well, too. That's even kind of part of like the charm and the struggle of it. And then you get to appreciate everything when you're an actual adult and you're going out and like making real money. It's like, hey, I can have all the space now. I can do whatever the hell I want to. I can administer my own network now. Yeah, it, it's like uh, I, I get this weird nostalgia sometimes for my first year of college where uh, I was in the we used to call it the hospital because it, it was it was because it looked this, like a hospital this dorm it's a really nice dorm don't get me wrong but it was always really quiet and dead because it was like mostly the older students that lived there that just kind of were either there that they either weren't there or they were sleeping so sure. it was like you get a suite with four four bedrooms uh and then like a small common area and bathrooms to share but it's like the bedrooms are like the size of a prison cell or a hospital room. Oh, jeez! And you literally get about that much space. And like, I sometimes I get weirdly nostalgic for that where I'm just like, man, 2017 was a simple time. I was going through my, I was going through my jet ads. I wasn't worrying about school that much. I was literally just going, going to class, coming home, playing video games and writing about them. And that was really chill. I would not trade what I have now for, for that never not 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 for the world but you, I, I, you wouldn't <laughs> you you're saying you wouldn't downgrade but there's also something to value back then yeah there's like some there's like some nostalgia for that sim- simplicity of that where i was just kind of all i really had to worry about was you know these little bits of of homework and assignments and uh then i could do whatever i want with the rest of the time it was it was a great t- year to find find who i wanted to be free of sure. uh, free of my hometown and everybody i knew back there and that was that was a good time. Sure, sure. No, I know um, what was going on back then. No, I, I'm just trying to think of... I, I've had... I remember, like, in the moment having some of these talks with some of my friends of, like, hey, yeah, this is great. Like, this is nice because, you know, you're finding yourself. You're getting your own freedom for the first time, especially if, like, you're living on your own. Um, because I myself, I, I did it, like, kind of a weird roundabout way. I went from living with parents to living by myself to briefly having roommates at one point and then living by myself again Mm -hmm. um so i didn't have like the the whole like like kind of middle thing where you go from you know parents roommates then by yourself um however on there i I just remember having some conversations with friends back in college and that like one of my best friends he was saying he's like yeah people say this is like the best time of your life and i'm like i'm and i kind of sound like i can kind of see it but like if this is the best time of my life This is going to be really awful as well, too, because like, no, I am busy. I am barely sleeping. I am stressed out about grades and schoolwork and all this stuff. Like, this is awful. Yeah, it's it's got ups and downs for sure. I think, honestly, it's just that school uh, depends on what degree you're doing. But school as a whole is almost always just kind of going through the motions. Like everybody makes out college to be this whole new thing. And like it is you do get to decide a little bit more what it's like for you. But honestly as i'm finishing up this degree in multimedia production i'm just like man i really like i'm glad i have the degree i'm glad i've learned some of the things i've learned but i really did not need to spend four years doing this it's like i you know it's like i have classes where i went to learn how to edit videos and the the teacher gave us uh after effects templates and uh, he downloaded off of uh youtube sure from from tutorials and that's all he taught us (laughs) and i'm like did i need to pay you for that like i could have done that myself in my dorm room i don't (laughs) and and a lot of people are learning no you don't need to do that but it's having it's having that four years and having that that degree still helps out but like even so it's becoming less and this isn't even to demean it but it's becoming less valuable and there's more of that that skill set that is looked at there but there's a lot of people who if they're just able to really grind it out for several years like in their bedroom they can get into some pretty solid positions or even kind of like do a roundabout way of getting into there um one of my one of my best friends for example um only zoltan um he's been on here before but i know with him he went to college for computer science but he's always been into halo he's really been into competitive halo and then after college, he couldn't get a job like in his field. So he was working at a cell phone store, um, like, you know, selling service, selling phones, all of that. And then in the evenings and at night and on weekends, he was doing his like his Halo competitiveness, like competitive stuff. Uh, he was what else was going on with him? Uh, he was 
traveling for a lot of tournaments. He was coaching. He started getting into commentating. So he was streaming. Uh, he started teaching himself all of that. Uh, and then even on the side from all of that, he started working on uh, anime like parody dubs and such. So him and his brother were learning how to do that. And all of that just kind of culminated and came into the right moment at the right time where he's now working for the score esports where he's an editor there but he was able to get his foot in the door because he was so well known in the area there locally for all of the work he's done with competitive halo and they're like oh you know how to stream you know how to do video editing you know how to do all this stuff pretty damn well and you actually understand the content yeah if there was anything that college was good for and, and this seems like this is true for him too it's just like giving you that time to you know it, it, it the the gap between being 18 and being 21 is a lot bigger than it sounds. You, you, you as a person, yeah. you change a lot. And I feel like it, I would do it all again, if not for nothing, but the time to figure out what I wanted to do and teach myself how to do it in a space where I was not responsible for, you know, uh, keeping up an entire life and a full-time job and a career and all that, mm -hmm. where, you know, I could make mistakes. I could go try and I, I, I went into college to do it, trying to do computer science. And I realized, hey, me after, too. yeah, I realized after my first programming class, I said, Oh fuck, no, I don't want to do this for the rest of my <laughs> life. Uh, so I, then I changed and here, here I am. And even after finishing this degree, I'm like, well, yeah, I, I obviously haven't finished yet as I need an internship. Uh, but right now it's kind of hard to get an internship and, uh, multimedia production especially if you have no interest in doing news which i don't want to go work for like a news station that no it does no. not appeal to me so uh i haven't finished it yet but if anything this has given me time to think about and and like work on youtube stuff since 2017 and in the three four years i've been doing it like i've started getting to a point where it can be my job in the future even if not now it's something where I know I can work towards it. And if I, if I think if I had to go straight out of high school and, you know, worked a job to support myself while not going through school and not having like, you know, financial aid or my parents support because I was in school, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now. So that's, that's uh, one thing about it where I think even if you don't use your degree, it's not a waste. If you meet people and you learn things, from yourself that you wouldn't have been able to otherwise mm -hmm. a lot of it is for that experience yeah and i i don't want to come off as like super preachy on here by any means but it's very much a thing of i've i've said it for years i'm just like you know if you're able to go and get a degree in something that you want to do and you're able to get a job in there and work in that field and you enjoy it like awesome that is great and um i think it's also really scary and not at all realistic to expect all these kids who are at 18 i think mentally you're still a kid mm -hmm. but i i just think it's really crazy that a lot of people are expected to pick what they want to do for perhaps the rest of their lives or like what they're going to do for their major career because people change their careers several different times over in their lifetime it could be when you're 18 19 it could be when you're 45 all of a sudden and it just completely depends on you and college is also not for everyone but the thing that does look really appealing is not only the experience and what you learn from it but college just like it's not for everyone in the way of hey you don't have to get a degree with this it's also not for everyone in the way that not every single person is going to be able to easily get this degree because getting a four-year degree in my opinion and i'm sure you would agree it's not easy like you yeah, can't no, just do it in your not. sleep yeah, it's really frustrating. It's difficult. It's a lot of time and energy and blood, sweat and tears. Like it's a lot of work hours there going into it. So really what a degree is able to prove is like, hey, you can give me as an 18 year old a task and I'm able to accomplish that really difficult task over the course of four, four and a half, maybe five years. Maybe I might have to take a break here and come back, but I can see something to fruition. Right. And I think that uh, at least you don't, this is what my brother told me, but he said that if I was not so close to finishing it, when he would have told me this earlier, you don't have to go for a degree. You don't have to go finish it. If you just, if you have skills you want, you can just go take that class and learn what you want to learn from it and apply it however you want. So degrees are nice and all, but if you, if it's something where you're planning on being self-employed or, you know, if you're planning on going into a creative field, we're getting to the point where I think that, creative careers are more valuable and more accessible to people than ever 
And there are careers where you can go take two or three classes at a college and know how to get into that industry without having to go finish a four-year degree. Like, I think in my in my three or four years I've been here, um, the classes I've taken that have been the most valuable have been documentary production. Because mm-hmm. in these two semesters, I learned more about working a camera, uh, editing, uh, how to produce a documentary, how to actually, like shoot things in a way that looks good and is and is professional i i think that those two classes taught me more than all my other classes combined and i think that's that awesome i could do something with that those skills that i don't think if you if i didn't take those classes those are even part of my major if they, those are part of my minor if if i just did my major with no minor and finished it out i don't think i'd be nearly as prepared for any of the jobs i could feasibly get as I am with these two classes. So it, it really comes down to what you think you want to do. And if you're going into it, this is just like, I'm again, not want to be preachy. Cause I don't want to go, go preachy when you're not going preachy. <laughs> if you're going into college and you don't know what you want to do, definitely just do the exploratory route, take your gen eds and figure out what you're interested in, because you're going to find time and people that get you into whole new things. And you're going to learn that there's a lot of things that you never even thought to try doing that you maybe want to do for a living. Sure, sure. And and don't like completely like give up like completely out of whack either, but also realize some limitations as well. Like for for you, like this is awesome where you were saying, hey, you learned your first class. Oh, hell no, I don't want to do computer science. It took me a year and a half to get to that point. And right. not even that, oh, this is not what I want to do. It was a year and a half of feeling really dumb and not confident and failing. I, I didn't actually get any failures, but I did get pretty close. Mm-hmm. But just like doing like the work i've ever done scholastically and really to the point where i was really just kind of rolling around my head and convincing myself like i can do this this is fine this is fine and it's like no this is not fine and i i got my degree in management information systems but my only regret about that degree is not switching sooner like even so many years removed from college now like i still tell people that i'm like no my my major regret if anything is i should have switched sooner a year or maybe even half a semester prior yeah, I had my first semester with a programming class, and I just, you know, I'm I'm good at, with computers. I think I know that's a weird, like a way to phrase that, but I think I'm good at understanding how computers work. I'm a very I, like, I understand exactly what you mean because I'm that same way. Yeah, I like I look at something, I'm like I'm like oh this this controls this or this works this way. Like I, that makes sense. But when it comes to writing code, my brain just I can't wrap my head around it. I tried to learn C sharp, <laughs> and you know, I was very excited about it. And that's my first class, a very first programming class to make you take. And I just could not wrap my brain around it. And I thats I did not fail that class. But like you said, I, I had to withdraw because I was going to fail that class. And, and I, I changed without a second thought. And thank God I did because I would not be able to get by through that. That's awesome. And, and you know, it's kind of the uh, – even on the flip side, it's the opposite as well too where I've met people who are just ingenious people when it comes to security and coding and such. And then they tell me, they're like, yeah, I fucked up installing a stick of RAM. Like I put it in <laughs> – opposite and i was like how they're like i don't know like it fit it 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 it, it didn't feel incorrect it went in fine but like it no it was i put it in the wrong way (laughs) which is uh very hard to do considering how they're uh slotted for that i know Um, i know i know so so you see the exact opposite as well too yeah i've i've met brilliant coders who are really not good with actual computers and that that's okay yeah there are this is the same thing with teams and in real life and and like real projects people have brains that work different ways and there's gonna be you know things that you're very good at and you think should connect you to a different skill but just doesn't and -hmm. that's okay if your brain is fantastic at understanding how software works but you can't write software that's okay there are careers for that there are uses for that and there are people on teams that you're gonna have that you're gonna uh work with that are going to be the opposite of that. And that's, you know what? That's beautiful. It's, it's awesome when you get a team of people together to work on something where the three, like the two or three people that you work with just are sides of the same uh, coin mm-hmm. where they understand what you don't and you understand what they don't and you can just bounce things off each other. It, it's really great. Like I, I, I've always been strong with words, but not very good at like visual arts. And my partner is a uh, graphic designer Oh, and wow. I think being best friends and a partner with two graphic designers has 
given me knowledge that I would not be able to understand myself and just taught me how to do things I wouldn't be able to do. And I like to think they uh, feel the same way as far as technical and writing stuff. That's awesome. That's really cool, especially when you're able to work so closely with people like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, right, working with graphic designers, if you're not a graphic designer, is one of the most, like, bizarrely interesting, frustrating, and useful things at the same time. Because you're like, oh god, I used to make stuff that looked like this. <laughs> when you look back at your old work, and, like, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're gonna show them stuff you made and think, like, exciting for approval, and you're like, oh... They're like, oh, that's, uh, let's fix this. And I'm like, oh, no. But it, you do learn a lot. And it's the kind of thing where just, like, meeting people that know things you don't, but that are so good at it that you so get better at it by being around them is one of the coolest feelings that college let me to have, like, let yeah. me, let me feel. One thing, even because I've been out of college for several years, but one thing I've really kind of caught myself doing, which I have to kind of consciously work to not do this, is to not assume skills with people and by that i mean there's been several like collaborative things i've been working on with people online um where it could be just i'm trying to be vague about it but could be like any type of you know tech modding related project whatever it is and when talking to several people it's like these are people that they are definitely very knowledgeable respected just really smart people but they'll tell me like oh yeah i don't know how to do this certain thing i'm like really you you know how to do like these other things that are very technical but then they might screw up something really really basic or like i'll have to walk them through it and i'm just like wow you've you've worked with all this other stuff but you've never done like this other task which just kind of slightly removed from it and i've kind of realized i need to stop assuming those skills um because it's never like a demeaning thing at all it's just very much like always catch me by surprise i i guess one of the one of the best things I could think of is I'd had a game night with a few friends and there's a, there's one guy, he described himself like this, but his words, he had said, look, I know I'm like a really like, he's like, I know I, I don't fit this stereotype. Like I'm a really like tall, masculine kind of buff guy, but I'm a big fucking nerd. (laughs) Honestly, I know so many gym rats that were huge into role playing games and stuff yes. like that anime. Yes, <laughs> I, I used to work. I don't work there anymore because of COVID, but uh, and I just haven't gotten back in there because I'm so close to graduation. But I used to work at my school's game room, and mm-hmm. uh, the people I worked with there, it was such like a wide group of people. But I mean, I used to work with dudes who, you know bring a protein shake to work and a gallon of water and you know they're they're always at the gym and you and you hang out with them and they're just eating pure like just a just a tub of meat because that's how they are (laughs) and like you wouldn't think it but then they also like are super excited for the for the latest anime and they're they're they like to play D &D with you and that's that's awesome it's it's kind of Mm -hmm. awesome um i don't know it's like people have their own like diverse tastes and experiences and i think that we're getting to a point where it's no longer so easy to categorize people. I think the internet has made it so easy to find and become interested in new topics and hobbies. And that's awesome. It's, it's so awesome that you can just find and get into hobbies through just stumbling upon a YouTube video one day. Yeah. Yeah. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I I absolutely love it. And you you never know who's behind the anime profile picture these days. (laughs) No, you you don't. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's interesting that like, (sighs) That's one of the things I've said, I've said this on Twitter before, but I've, one of my favorite things about uh, YouTube and social media is that there are so many hobbies and t- topics and interests that you can just go find microcosms on of mm-hmm. through YouTube and like enjoy that from an outsider's perspective and just like learn about it and, and like, but in your own way without having to spend the time or, or like money to get into it. Like there's, there's stuff that like, you know, I, I have no intention of ever riding a motorcycle but I love watching motorcycle vlogs. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I, I, it's just one of those things where it's like, you never know what someone could be into given the opportunity and, like, free of risk to try something. Yeah. And uh, that's that's one of the cool things is just that, like, you know, I have friends from that job where we would we would go play D&D at a friend's house and one of us would go to the gym, one of us would go to uh, the board game shop, and one of us would go to our job where we were working in an office. It's just really cool to me. 
Mm -hmm. and, and not even with uh with just like i guess walks of life there but even just you talking about the whole motorcycle thing kind of reminded me of this uh, youtube has been absolutely invaluable for anything car related because like i'm one of those people cars like working on cars kind of terrifies me a little bit i'm not really the best there i admittedly pay you know someone to change my oil and such um but it's given me watching random shit on youtube has kind of given me that extra confidence where it's like i can i did this in high school but like i can pretty confidently install a aftermarket stereo in a car like mm -hmm. that's fine um my ex for example she had completely busted uh one of her uh side windows uh, or not side windows side mirrors and it was really funny because like she did that and like just that day or the day before i was randomly watching a video showing how to replace the uh the handle on a door and you know you have to take off the whole frame and such and i was like oh this actually looks pretty easy and the mirror is going to be about the same and i told her i'm like no don't worry about it i can do it and she was just kind of surprised like no i mean granted i don't think it's going to be perfect and we're not going to pay for one that's like you know matching color but how about this if you pay for all the parts i can try my hand at this it doesn't really look too hard it would and sure enough yeah i looked up like one or two videos i had to go to home depot once to get some screws and washers and it took me about an hour to get this all in there yeah youtube is one of those things especially for car mechanics where it, it is really the future of learning to be a mechanic or learning to work on cars if your mechanic doesn't use youtube to learn things like some will say well since he knows what he's doing no he's not keeping up with things I, like <laughs> and, and just to illustrate that fact my first uh my first car out of sight of high school uh was i got it for my 18th birthday I, I had paid for it but my dad finally like got it together for me for my 18th birthday and uh, sure got a stereo put in it so i could have my phone with everything but like it was a 2001 volvo s80 loved that car miss it every day um, but Volvos are Volvos. They're very, uh, like, uh, electrically complex and finicky. And, uh, the one I got was some old lady's, uh, church and grocery car. So she drove it very little. Nice shape, but the rearview mirror, uh, had, like, this film that had gone all, all hazy. So you couldn't really see out the rearview mirror. So my, my okay. dad's mechanics were, like, because at the t time my dad had a car dealership. Um, and he was like, okay, I'm gonna have my mechanics fix that for you. And um, so I took the car for a test drive the first day I had it, uh, you know, it had a sunroof, which was cool because I'd never had a car with a sunroof before. So I opened the sunroof and went for a drive and had fun, got back, closed the sunroof and then um, dropped the car off to get work done. So I come back the next day, they've replaced the mirror from one out of a, a different Volvo um, sure. and uh, thrown the old one in the dumpster. And I get in the car and I go to open the sunroof and nothing happens. And I'm like, hello can someone take a look at this and so <laughs> long story short what happened with that was that volvo has a chip in that mirror that is one time programmable to a car's ecu oh no and if you replace it without having it flashed by the dealership then none of your your uh your sunroof won't work your dome lights won't work your alarm doesn't work your this keyless is 2001 work. yep Jeez, Volvo, baby, <laughs> and so and, and I looked into how much it was to fix it, and Volvo was said that the part was three hundred dollars, and then it would be hours of labor to have it programmed. So it was just like, I guess I have a car without a sunroof or an alarm now. So that that was just how I drove that car. But mm -hmm. it's like one of those things where like it's not the dude's fault that worked on it because like who the hell thinks there's a one time programmable chip in a mirror, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's you really gotta like get up on things on youtube because there are people who all they work on is volvos my dad's mechanics only worked on old american cars but there are people out there who only work on volvos and bmws and all that and they know these things and they share that knowledge for free that normally you have to go to a mechanic and pay them a hundred dollars an hour for you know yeah i want to say i believe it's either newer mercedes or bmws i want to say i heard the story with a newer mercedes where a mechanic just replaced a battery easy enough and then a whole ton of shit on the car didn't work and it turns out you have to reprogram several different things in a very specific order if you're just replacing the battery on this car yeah, it was stuff like that all the time. Stuff where you have to like remove the entire front end of the car to get a headlight bulb or stuff like that. Yep. It's just real dumb. And then like with stuff going forward, like uh, BMW wants you to pay subscription services for um, like heated seats. What? Wait, I a subscription service? Yeah, it's like features. There are features. Of I had the car to think of that. 
There are features oh in the God. car where it's not going to be an option you pick when you buy the car and then going forward if you want it, you have to either get a new car or go, you know. It's not like that. Going forward, oh it's going to be God. stuff where features of the car are locked behind paywalls and you have to pay a subscription service. I, can't, I, can't, I think it was a heated seat. I may be misremembering, so don't yell me, yell me if I'm wrong. But, uh, <laughs> like, it's stuff like that and i'm like so what happens in 20 years when they're not supporting this car anymore and you own it in the in the north and it's 20 degrees out well i'm even <laughs> i'm even thinking as well too like for kids who are learning with cars now it's a lot more difficult because uh like my car for example the um so i got like uh what the hell was it i got remote start installed and it was aftermarket but the smartest thing that my car has is a backup sensor on there mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't even beep or anything so you still have to be cognizant like it has a backup camera like backup camera and bluetooth and like android auto that is like the smartest stuff my car has and i like it that way um i'll probably get a smarter car for my next car mind you but i have the basics and foundations of it down but a lot of kids are going to miss out on a lot of basics of learning like safety and navigating a car and actually utilizing this very powerful gigantic tool on the road just because there's really no cars out there that are just a car like it's just a vehicle and a key and that's it there's really nothing else that's smart on it yeah, and even now, as we're starting to the point where people aren't buying 2000 or 1990s cars for their first no. cars anymore, they're buying 2011 to 14 Hondas and Toyotas and Mazdas, and that's great for safety, and that's great because you're getting a more reliable car, but it really does, you know, you're getting to these newer cars that have all these features from stock that, you know, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, not even Mercedes had yet, and it was like, I, you know, I'm looking for a car right now, I'm looking to buy a, a, a Lexus CT, which is like a Prius, but lexus mm -hmm. uh and that's cool because it's all lex it's all toyota parts uh and mm -hmm. it's really cheap for the money like, like it's like it's cheap lexus and it's reliable but the weird that's thing awesome. is it's like it's this in it's like the first couple years of those cars are like in a weird in between between 2000s technology and 2020 technology where like it's got you know a backup camera from from uh factor like like it's always like it was like a standard equipment as i was trying to say there uh but the stereo from stock looks like it's something out of a 2002 toyota matrix it has like a, <laughs> it has like a tape deck sitting in there yes it actually has a tape deck i believe i mean that's very useful for aux but well then i okay well the, uh, bluetooth and shit and aux okay that's a whole yeah, it, other thing it's really interesting cause like uh, stuff like that it's like I'm, I'm excited to finally have a newer car it's the newest car i've had besides that was a 2006 and it was sure. a Buick, so it was basically like a 2002. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's also kind of scary. It's like, oh my god, now I have to worry about all these electrical things and these sensors. You know, there are sensors that go out that cost you thousands of dollars to fix. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't know. As cars get more and more complex, especially like the early generations of stuff, it's going to be real hard to fix. And there's no more, you know, you and your dad in the garage sort of wrenching on a car and learning how to fix it yourself. And sure, that's kind of sad. Sure. So that's an era ending. And and I believe as well too. I'm not sure if you'd agree with this, but I believe like for your first car, you don't get a nice car. You can have a car that you like, you can have a car that you enjoy, but you don't get like a brand new car or a nice car or anything. Um, it's best to get, as I like described, a a dumb car with nice features like put in a nice stereo system like put in a backup camera if you want to that's okay that's going to help you out but you learn with the foundations of driving you scuff it up you mess it up you wreck it once or twice you all you, all the bad shit that you need to get out in a first car that you have for you know a few years you do that and then once you have a good foundation of driving of understanding how a car works and such of what to do you can then reward yourself with a nicer car yeah absolutely i think the, the way to go is to get something a little bit older and nice that was nice when it was new but it's depreciated but something that's not going to break on you like don't get your, for your kid uh, like a like a 2005 mercedes for their first car yeah they're four thousand dollars but they're four thousand dollars for a reason you know yes th i've that, heard that many times <laughs> that volvo i had did have its issues but man that was a great car and it was two grand from a dealer mm -hmm. auction and that was a great car for me to like come of age in because it was like you know it was nice it was comfortable it was safe but it wasn't so fancy that i was like showboating around and, and getting into crashes and you know i did i did like have the occasional if i got hit in the parking lot and like normally if you get hit in the parking lot uh then it's like oh man I, my, my nice car but i had a two thousand dollar beater volvo so it's not a huge deal it's like sure yeah in a few years i'll be in something else and i won't even think about this so i think yeah. it's definitely your first car should be something uh 
nice, but not too nice. You need to learn to appreciate the nice stuff later. Yeah, exactly. Because I've, so like in my life, I've only had two cars. I've had a 2000 Camry and then a 2016 uh, Hyundai Sonata, which is what I'm driving right now. Mm -hmm. But like that Camry, I wanted to take it to the end. And I, we, we picked it up used, but I had it probably a bit longer than I needed to. And then it just got to the point. The reason why we got rid of it is because I'm sure you could, you could fix up everything on there and it would be okay but it started having some pretty bad mechanical issues and it was going to be just thousands of dollars only to fix the mechanical issues that didn't include you know the car kind of pulling to the right and uh, like the windows pretty much by the end only one window was working and a bunch of other issues were happening so uh it just kind of got to the point it's like you know financially it would make more sense to just get another car yeah actually funny you mentioned that i had a friend that had a 2000 camera and she loved it and she had it around 200,000 miles and she said she never did anything on that car she had to replace the ignition coil once but that thing was just absolutely bulletproof and she said she would have been driving it to this day probably mm -hmm. if it didn't get totaled in an accident oh, um rip yeah so rest in peace to that car but she said that that like that car made her appreciate how good a simple car that is just comfortable and works reliably and you yeah. know, get a stereo so you got your music but you don't need much more than that yep. and if you love yep. cars there's always gonna be something interesting in your price range don't Yo. go don't go get the newest camry that's go it get something else and the uh the nice thing is with those it made me appreciate a family car because even when you're talking about comfort it's like oh wow you know if you're just piling in here and you got a bunch of people in or like your family or something the car actually needs to be comfortable right yeah the volvo was great for taking people places uh, like we we used to use that for game nights and like trips to restaurants all the time and it was so comfortable and people would always comment when they got into it this is a nice car for an 18 year old because mm -hmm. it had wood on the dash and it had leather seats but it was a two thousand dollar car and mm -hmm. it, it, it's just there's so much stuff out there that you can get for you know it's 10 10 or so years old for a few thousand dollars that is so much nicer than what you'll get for a brand new car for triple the money sure i, I think honestly just get your kids something from 10 years ago with leather seats and a, and a bluetooth stereo and they'll be fine and then exactly i don't know cars are so fun and like there's, there's an important thing about buying cars for young adults and teenagers is that yes it's easy to say you don't need a blank you can get a, a honda civic for two thousand dollars it is a little bit important for if you like cars to make sure you don't hate what you're driving. That's true. Yes, because if you like what you're driving or you even love it, which is better, you're actually going to take care of it and you're going to care about it. Yeah, I took care of that Volvo. I loved that Volvo. Uh, it ended up getting like just all kinds of minor things started happening. I, I hit a bird going 50 miles an hour at a seagull. <laughs> uh, for a while, I had my friends called you're me. You're a the, seagull killer. Oh, my God. They used to call me the birderer because I... <laughs> I hit a bird, uh, and it smacked the driver's side mirror, liquefied the poor bird. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> and that mirror smacked my uh, smacked my window and cracked the window, and that happened, and then one of the other window regulators went out, and I started having some uh, misfires. And that was just time for that car to go, but I loved sure. that car, and I was taking care of it, and it was, it was mechanically totaled, kind of like your Camry, because, like, you know, when, when your car's $2,000, everything is mechanically totaled, but... but um, exactly. When I had after that was a Cadillac Eldorado, a 2000. I didn't want it. My dad said, this is a great car. Take this. Because uh, he just had it in inventory at the time. He was still a dealer. And uh, mm -hmm. man, that car, I hated it. It was a nice car. It was all right. But I hated driving it. It was like the heaviest boat of a vehicle. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, going from a Volvo to a Cadillac, and I, I just had to look it up because I, I know what car this is now. But yeah, that's a really big difference there. It's just so large. You don't have a, the nose comes to a point and you don't know how long it is. So I bumped every like gas station stopper pole <laughs> um, and it smelled like it was on fire. I had to use the like uh, the cassette aux thing, but it didn't quite work. I had to like it kept spitting it back out. And I had to like, it was just such a pain in the ass, and I just hated that vehicle. I'd never, I don't think I washed it once in the year I owned it, just because I just didn't want to deal with it. Sure. So that's one thing I will say is yes, get them something they like, get something responsible, but also make sure they have a hand in picking it. Because when you're forcing mm -hmm. something on a kid and they don't want it, then they're just gonna destroy it and not really? take care of it. I, I did, I did my part to take care of it, but that thing was beyond saving. <laughs> you did the best you could. 
There was I, um, I didn't race it, so there's that. <laughs> there was one thing actually with cars. I was thinking of telling the story here, but uh, I'd actually just uh, like, as I said, I I take my car to get serviced and such. Like I pay someone to do an oil change, mm-hmm. but I was actually really happy with this. So. I did notice is like the day before I got my oil change um, and I was going to ask you how weather was over there, but I think this was it because I had checked my oil levels and I noticed my car's hood wouldn't stay up by itself, which it's Mm. never done. So I was just thinking, oh, it's okay. It's something with the weather or whatever. It's fine. Um, I took it in to get serviced and they had like recommended services, things that you need to look at. And one of the things is they said, hey, you need to replace your hood struts. And Mm -hmm. I immediately, I'm like, oh shit, okay, so they're not staying up, all right. But I looked at how much they were, and to replace the hood struts, it was going to be $331. So I don't work on my own car that much, but I know that's not too unreasonable. (laughs) Well, so here's the thing, though. It was $331, and I looked at it, and I was like, "Uh, I don't really feel like paying this much today. Uh, I This isn't necessary for my car to work, but let me just look this up looked it up for about five or 10 minutes on YouTube, saw how easy it was to replace these. Like I I encourage anybody just look up how to replace hood struts and you'll see how easy it is. You literally just need some time, your hands and a flathead screwdriver. Yeah. But it was to the point where one of my friends, I think he put it best. He said that when he replaced his, it took him 20 minutes to replace his hood struts. And then he spent 40 minutes cussing at himself, wondering why he didn't do it sooner. But yeah, What I did was I had seen those and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get this serviced. I'm just going to buy it and do it myself because it was 20 bucks to get the parts. And I was like, okay, $20. I'll get them through Amazon. I'll just do it in my own garage. When I got home, I decided to pop open the hood just to be like, okay, let me make sure I have something here that I can actually keep this propped open so I don't bump my head. And they worked just fine. So I ended up immediately canceling my Amazon order, but that was just a very quick thing of it was going to be $331. I questioned it a little bit, so I was going to spend $20 doing it on my own, and then it ended up being a non-issue, which I'm still pretty convinced it was just because my car's never been in the super extreme cold that we had. So that's why I recommend for car stuff, even if you're not sure, if you question it, you're not sure about, just look it up on YouTube. Yeah, I had, I didn't know that was a thing either because you know I'm in Florida, so we have it never gets that cold here. It's been like in the 40s recently at night. Uh, Fahrenheit, right? And, yeah, and it never okay. gets that cold. Okay. So the coldest it hit for me was negative 11 one day. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one nice thing about Florida is that because it's always hot, we never have to worry about winter weather driving or tires or anything like that. We'd nev- it's never a concern. Sure, sure. But I was actually going to ask, like, how was Florida with this most recent just like cold front that ended up hitting so many places? Yeah, it was honestly, we got it pretty normal. It just feels like a normal February for us. It's It's been like some really? days it's up to 80, some days it's down to 35. And it's, you know, that's not too unusual, at least for my lifetime. I, it, it's, okay. it's not been bad in terms of weather. It's not been bad in terms of cars being finicky it's literally just been a normal florida february i'm dreading the day it gets back to be uh 80 90 every day because i hate that i literally uh, i hate more than any other physical feeling in the world being hot okay so you know i keep my apartment at 67 degrees so does my girlfriend we all just uh, the the heat is the worst i'm so not looking forward to it getting warm this this is why you're trying to get out of florida yes yes this is (laughs) There are many reasons, but this is chief among them. I absolutely hate the heat. I want to live somewhere where it gets to be 80 at the hottest ever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so I guess that's where Washington would help out. So at least like all all the rain will help keep it cool, I suppose. (laughs) Yeah, my brother uh, used to live in L.A. He was in Palm Desert now, but he used to live in L.A. And I remember whenever we'd visit him, I'd just be in bliss for that entire week. Because it was like I was in t-shirt and jeans and I was just absolutely comfortable like i was sitting on the couch inside Mm -hmm. and it was absolutely wonderful so yeah i absolutely can't stand heat (laughs) well you know even though we did get a major cold front i'm happy it didn't affect you all like that then because i'm sure you've seen like just like the crazy videos of houses literally just freezing over and falling apart and such like from the inside i always forget where exactly you live again 
Uh, I'm in Kansas. Okay. So I'm I'm in the Midwest, and like for for us, like how do I put it here? So I've had like I've I'm just used to crazy weather where it's it's quite literally within a 24 hour period we can have a snowstorm and then it's like beautiful and sunny and in like the 80s something yeah. like that. Like that can happen. It's very bipolar. But the reason why I was more worried about this is because all my life living here, I have never had it. To the point where it was so cold for so long, like consistently single digit temperatures and negative temperatures in Fahrenheit. Yeah, I can't even imagine that. Yeah, it was it was very cold. It was definitely I had I think just today uh, I stopped dripping. it. I was dripping a faucet for about two weeks just so I wouldn't have to worry about my pipes freezing or anything. Mm. Uh, I've told many friends to do that. One of my friends, her pipes ended up freezing. Um, and that's very much a real thing. But it's funny because I've talked with people about this. And there's been people in northern areas, like especially there's a couple people I've talked to in Canada where they've said, yeah, like even like the crappy houses, like we've we've never heard of that issue. I'm just like, well, your houses are designed with all that insulation with this in mind. So your pipes will never freeze. While as like then you see Texas where there's there's literally it's there, there's no infrastructure there for mm-hmm. you know any type of snow. There's no preparation for it. There's no skill when it comes to driving on snow. Even the people who do drive on skill on snow who are skilled, they really underestimate not only the other drivers, but how much actually salting and treating the roads will help out. The apartments, the houses, everything there is not designed for extreme cold that they yeah. were having. The people aren't used to it, and the infrastructure isn't built for it. And I keep seeing that picture of the frozen ceiling fan, which I think is depressing, yep. but also hilarious a little bit. Yep. But uh, yep. no, it's yep. I don't know. I remember like uh, there's this uh, guy on YouTube is uh, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he does the VinWiki channel uh, about cars, and he says that uh, he he remembers this one time he was working on a Lamborghini dealership in uh, Atlanta, and it was like a real bad snowstorm one day and he just like the, the dealership was on either the top or the bottom of a hill and he just washed out the window that day as people just slid into each other all day long because oh, <laughs> southerners don't know how to handle the snow because I, no. I, I know it, it can rain uh can snow in georgia sometimes but that's about as far south as the snow ever gets and it never really sticks that much so mm-hmm. I don't know, I've only seen snow two or three times in my life, and all all of them were in North Carolina and Virginia when I was on vacation. So gotcha. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where like I'm I'm excited about snow when I move, but I'm also a little bit fearing it. But I, I'm ho- I'm hoping that the people in Texas are doing okay. I know that a lot of them just got slapped with some very 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 high bills today. Yeah, yeah, and I I really hope there's something that's gonna iron those out. I actually I was even checking my own gas bill because my furnace was like, and I wasn't even worried about mine because I have a newer furnace. But uh, when it comes down to it, I'm just like, I'm not sure about the usage because it's like I can pay for a bit more, but like I don't know if my bill is going to be like two hundred dollars or three hundred or two thousand dollars. Like right. I'm not sure because <clears throat> the, the gas prices spiked up. Yeah, on one on one hand, I'm very surprised uh, that that's an issue because living in Florida, we don't have snowstorms, but we have hurricanes like real mm. bad. So uh, in yeah, Florida, so, there's like so a it's bunch. Like, go ahead. It, 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 it's uh, yeah, and I was gonna say like for for you all, like you all are very much prepared for it, and then it's like people in Kansas, we have absolutely no preparation for hurricanes because why the fuck would we get a hurricane? <clears throat> so right. it's not like we have any of the prep or any of the setup, and our houses are certainly not equipped for that. Well, I was gonna say for that that is that we have laws and florida uh about scalping so uh you can't during times of hurricane or if an emergency has been declared you can't overcharge for water i think the same thing went i think that uh, law also applied for um uh like toilet paper and stuff during the covid crisis Mm -hmm. uh last year like it was you can't overcharge for water if you do you can be reported and you can be fined thousands of dollars by the government so That's i was for items though not really for services unless i'm understanding that incorrectly. i'm not sure about america about sorry about florida uh but i'm i would think that like places that have lots of uh like probably up north they have some sort of law where there's probably a cap i'm again mm-hmm. th- talking at my ass here i have no idea but i, I suspect that if this is a depending on how this goes, there'll probably be some sort of law introduced in the South to stop companies from charging you $10,000 for heat. Sure, sure. And I'm thinking like even uh, another point here is with Texas, it might be entirely different just because Texas is pretty deregulated when it comes to their energy. Mm-hmm. So there's, I mean, a, a pretty self-explanatory there. There's not really a, a universal regulation for that. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, that's, that's something I think we might, we might see change in some states, at least, uh, after this, because, man, that is just terrifying and also, like, world-ending for some people that does have a $10,000 energy bill. Yeah, they, they had no yeah, and it's like, well, what that. were you supposed to do, freeze to death? Like, yeah, exactly. what's up? <laughs> yeah, it, it's really unfortunate, and I hope that all gets straightened out, but it, it, it's, it's just interesting as a Floridian to see stuff like that happen in other places and how, you know, like, we may not be prepared for winter, and that would be awful for us if, if we were to get a snowstorm, not that we ever will knock on wood but uh it, it's interesting to see there's no laws in place like that because I, I i don't know if we have laws in place for uh utilities because frankly we don't have utilities during hurricanes we don't we don't really have power yeah yeah because everything's done yeah <laughs> the, the, as soon as it gets close the power's just out you see you see the lights go out for miles and you know you might get back the next day you might get it back the next week but like we always you go to the grocery store the day a, a tropical storm is projected to hit us and everybody's bought the water and, and it's like we're just used to it at this point everybody has like a stockpile of water laid sure. away for it so i mean that, that's certainly smart that's what you need to do so yeah and you can't really stockpile power for a for a blackout though that's the hard thing Mm -hmm. yeah i i'd spoken with uh one of my friends where i think one of the last hurricanes that was coming through i talked with him about and he was just like oh yeah don't worry about us we're fine we're all staying at this workplace that is related to my parents and uh we're kind of low key preppers as well so like don't worry we got everything set up but i appreciate you checking in (laughs) yeah the school actually made us evacuate last uh last big hurricane here so if you were living on campus you had to leave but like the thing was, is that it was going to be worse if I went uh, home to my parents' place. I live in Central that's, Florida. That's kind of worrying, yeah. Yeah, it was going to be worse. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll just stay with my girlfriend for the next week. And I did. And I literally just, we didn't even lose power. It was, it was like, I think it was Irma. It was ever the, the last real bad one that came through here was. Nice. Um, no, that wasn't Irma. It was the one in 2018. Uh, anyways, it was, we, we thought it was going to be real bad. And uh, I literally just sat and played video games at her place for two days because we didn't lose power. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go back on campus now because it's over that's and awesome. yeah it, it's 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 really nice to not like we have so many near misses like that but then that's 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 the thing is you can't get complacent with it because then we have stuff like katrina come where you know knocks mm-hmm. trees down and destroys houses i still mm-hmm. remember those ones were real bad back when i was a kid mm-hmm. yeah i think uh at least with me i think the longest that we've gone without power there was a really bad ice storm that hit like actually over a decade ago at this point um but i know my neighborhood we didn't have power for i want to say five and a half days it was something like that um it could have even been a little it was it was about a week let's say um but that was just really dangerous in terms of like of course like major cold um walking outside just like all the ice and such and then just trying to get power restored everywhere uh thankfully we were able to get a hotel room for like a couple days and then we end up staying with you know some friends and such just because it it depended on who had power and who didn't uh i had talked with somebody for example when we went back to school somebody said she lost power for four minutes the entire time yeah it's it's really got a dice roll and luckily down here when it comes to hurricanes we have the benefit of it being like if you lose power you're gonna live you're you're not gonna Mm -hmm. die unless you're like tied to some medical machine you're probably fine and, th- and if you are you're probably in a hospital anyway so it's like mm-hmm. um it, it's the, the worst it gets is where it's uncomfortable for a couple days while the while the uh heat just decimates our house but like it's not <sighs> that's the one thing we're lucky with is that we, we can generally survive the elements here but in the cold it's a whole different story and i'm really thankful we don't have to deal with that but sure um the power they've also just gotten so good at getting the power back on i think the, the only time it's ever taken more than a day was that group of real bad ones in 04 and 05 but okay. other than that it's like the next morning we wake up and it comes back on and that's it, it's it's like it's a shame that texas now has to think about after you know hundreds of years of not having to worry about snow has to think about this but i mean yeah yeah but it's very much a thing of like hey your power grid's kind of fucked up look at this <laughs> yeah if we had a, if we had an earthquake in florida it would be the same story like sure. every building would fall because because when is there ever an earthquake in florida you know no, it doesn't happen yeah. yeah and and it's just because like stuff like that doesn't need to get billed because it doesn't need to get accounted for because it hasn't been an issue until this point so uh-huh. and then there's so little time to prepare for it that you don't have time to get things ready so if there's gonna exactly. be suffering it's gonna be terrible no matter what exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh well there was uh there was one thing I actually wanted to get your reaction to this here. Uh do you have Twitter up? 
Uh, I can bring it up. What's up? Okay, sure. I was going to DM this to you real quick. So I've, I've shared this story before, but I know we were talking about houses earlier and such. And, and I just want to talk about how I wouldn't even say desperate, but just like how on top of this, one of my friend's parents had gotten. So her parents were looking to downsize their house. They essentially wanted to get something more in the city and they wanted to trade off. They didn't want as much land and they wanted more house and they didn't mind having a fixer upper. So they ended up getting a house like that was a really nice house. They sold it and then they ended up buying something that was it wasn't even on the market. They had talked with the person. I guess the realtor talked with the person and it had been abandoned for like at least three years and mm-hmm. really hadn't been maintained at all. Uh, but they ended up paying the full asking price in cash for this. Um, I wouldn't have done this because when I move somewhere, I don't want to fix up everything, even right. though it can be rewarding for sure. Um, but I'll just put like this. She ended up crying because she sent this picture. Like they had, they were walking around there looking at the house and in the dining room, they ended up seeing this right here. A squirrel? That's a dead squirrel. Oh dear! <laughs> in the dining room? Yeah, in 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 the dying room, right there. Yeah. Like that squirrel. That we we predict that it had gotten in somehow and then just couldn't find its way out, so it just kind of starved and died. But it's like it's just laying out, posted in the middle of the dining room. Man, that's uh, I, I've had stuff like that before, never to that extent, but. You know, we, we bought a house that was, you know, it was uh, built in like the 20s and uh, had like a, like the back house was built in the 20s and the front part was built in like the 70s. And um, the back house was real, real gross. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's just stuff like that can happen. But man, it's it's real, like you said, it's rewarding, <laughs> it's rewarding to, to fix a place up. And my parents are really happy with what they did with that back house uh, after all the work they put into it. But man, that's a lot of work and it's not for everybody. If, if you want to live somewhere and just be content it's going to take you five or ten years so you got to make sure you're down for that investment exactly exactly yeah and i think the uh the thing is it was mainly her dad was spearheading it but it was mm-hmm. very much a situation of like he'll get a house and then you know they'll do some renovations fix it up a bit but like they they've historically like the last few houses they got aside from this one were pretty nice houses and they did a few things to boost up the value and then he sees the dollar signs he's like oh wow i can make a lot of money on this so then they sell it and they have to just move the entire family into another house and even like the family's just tired of moving too so from what i know even her mom is just like this is it like we're done yeah <laughs> no more this yeah. is i am tired <laughs> yeah I, the, my, the house i grew up in my, my parents did so much to it they like added on a garage and they uh added on a whole like when my grandmother got uh got a little, a little bit older and a little bit uh started having some health problems they they moved her in with her with us and it became like an extra apartment onto the side of the house and did all these things sure. to it and then we moved out of it and we're like well I spent this entire time in this house living through construction sites because they were, you know, doing something to this room or doing something to this room or building on this attachment. And then we move out like, all right, well, <laughs> we're, we're not going to enjoy it. OK, was, was that worth it? <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely I'm glad my parents have like they've realized they've they need to like do more superficial and surface level things to the house and not rearrange it and build new entire attachments with the new the new one because yep. they are both getting up there in age i think they've both kind of decided this is the last house they're gonna buy so um i'm glad that's gonna be something where it's not a constant uh construction site every time i go home <laughs> mm-hmm. that is good that's good that they've at least kind of gotten to that part I, i'm hoping my friend's parents will kind of do the same thing because even it's just you you know like everyone is staying in the house because of covid and all that and then like mm-hmm. family is all on top of each other and then you also have this like this house that people didn't really like the majority didn't really want to move into but then it's being torn apart and it's pretty much a giant construction site right now so there, there's times where it does get tense but i think anybody would be within that situation if you give them the same parameters one of the nice things about uh the quarantine period not the quarantine has been nice but one nice thing about it is that uh i think it's given everybody ambitions to like do diy stuff and like make their space better because you're spending so much more time in it you want to make it something you enjoy spending time in and i think it's kind of revived that uh that diy and like home decorating uh spirit in a lot of people i think that uh you know we're we're still a few months away from getting a house but we, we all are just daydreaming about what we want to do with the space once we're in it and all the cool things we want to do with it when we have the the room and the the right to do it instead of being mm-hmm. in apartments and i think that's uh that's really interesting and fun is that like in you know in a few months time i'm finally going to get to realize 
all those things I've always wanted to do in this space but couldn't because of how small it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's it's. I'm I'm very excited for that. I, I rearrange my room like once a year because I just I love it. I, it's sure one of the most cathartic things in the world. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's awesome. I mean, that everybody will have their own thing on there, but no, actually getting your own space, like a proper space that is mm-hmm. actually yours and nice, like your first real nice space is really awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to have an office that's not my bedroom for the first time mm-hmm. in my life because, you know, as a, since a kid, it's always in my bedroom and then dorms and then yep. in my current apartment, it's small, so I have this space. It's like the best space I have for what I want to do. Well, I'm very much a person where I believe in spaces and, you know, mm-hmm. having some separation and all that. So, like, even I, because um, I, I have one of my bedrooms is set up specifically, like, as an office. And it's like, yeah, I have consoles here that I'll play and such, but, like, I got my personal computer, I have my work computer, I have all this stuff here, but you know what, if I decide screw it, I don't want to do YouTube stuff or work stuff, I can shut everything down, I can close the door, I have everything else that I can use. Um, But I do see, I I think of this several times now where, especially streamers, I'll see that they're just streaming in their bedroom, and it's not a slight to them, but I'm just like, wow, that must feel like they never stop working. It definitely has gotten to that point. They're streaming to everyone, and their bed's just right behind there. It's like, they're not doing that for a show. It's like, no, this is where they literally live. Yeah, it it does feel really, I alluded to this earlier with, like, everything touching. It's very hard to shut off when everything is connected together. And, you know, like, when I want to play games at my desk, I have to open my capture software to get the audio. Or it just, like, it's, like, it puts a pressure on you to, like, record everything you play or to turn everything you play into content. And that does kind of suck when you want to play something for you. Like, I really wanted to get into a variety of RPGs over the last year or so, but it's hard to justify that when I know that it's... A, such a large commitment and when i'm already playing games for what is currently my job it's sure. like oh, I, this has to be I, either i have to decide right now am i gonna start recording from the beginning or is this never gonna be content and mm-hmm. i've made myself not record some gameplay over the last year just to be some stuff that's just for me and i'm excited for the ability to separate that out where like i can leave my office and go play go play a game with my girlfriend and not feel like i'm not like i'm like i'm shirking responsibilities yeah i was recording. gonna say you're gonna have like a game setup or game room aren't you yeah it's, it's just gonna be a game setup room that's that's got a couch and my desk in it and it's just gonna be mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna be really cool and nice i'm probably gonna spend a lot of time in there just because it's where all the consoles are gonna be uh because like i i'm a firm believer in never having to unplug things i don't okay. want to have to like when i want to play a dreamcast game i don't want to dig out the dreamcast and plug it in and get it all configured and everything i just want to press the button and go so I have everything in a cabinet plugged in at once on HDMI switchers. That's my that's my goal is to have everything just set up and ready to go. So mm-hmm. I'll probably spend still spend time in that room uh, outside of work hours, but it'll be nice when I feel like I don't want to work on things or where I'm overwhelmed by work or I need to take some time off and spend time with friends and family to be able to just go into the living room and be away from it, but still like indulge in our hobby because all of us are gamers and that's very Shh. exciting sure sure and then like you don't want to yeah people don't want to deal with that either where it's like oh well hold on like you have to because i'm just thinking like my my old old apartment i mean it was mine and i was the only one who lived there so it was okay but for example um i had like my living area i had the pretty much in one room i had the living area kitchen area and then kind of a side kitchen middle entrance area and in like that corner that's where i put my computer um, but I had my capture card hooked up all the mm. time. That made it super easy to record on a dime. Uh, but it was funny because there was once where my friend and I, we were leaving and I turned off my computer and all of a sudden the game console cuts out and he just freaked out. And I was like, oh yeah, I turned off my computer. And then he freaked out even more. I was like, okay, let me explain. It's all hooked up to the capture card. The capture card's hooked up to my computer. Computer lost power. That's why. Let's go get food. But... <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's nice if people can just run and do something like that and they don't have to worry about any of the extra setup or messing with configurations yeah that's like i have like a splitter setup so it goes like one cable goes to the tv one cable goes to uh my mon- my monitor and then one goes to the capture card so that like sure. my computer's off doesn't matter um and like that's one thing that i i was like i do not want to have to have my computer on at all times to like it's like to watch a movie in bed you know so mm-hmm. that's one thing I'm excited about is just be able to separate that. Like, I'm, you know, m- my friends and I, uh, I've discovered like just this past weekend with the 360 that my, my girlfriend and I really like playing fighting games together. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's going to be nice to not have to do it in my workspace and be tiny. If I just want to go like 
played a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fighting game with my girlfriend for a couple hours. Mm-hmm. It's not like I feel like I have to be surrounded you can by literally work. like stretch. What? You can like literally stretch and you can move. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously, <laughs> it's it's impossible to like. I have like the back of my chair is touching my bed right now, not my desk. It's it, that's, oh, that's literally how tiny it is. So it's it's a it's an exciting prospect, a scary one, but definitely exciting and like uh, it's going to be really validating and um helpful to be able to separate out aspects of my life and then for sure feel like i'm an adult with a with a house and friends and family that live there with me instead of uh <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah no i get it because i i know even uh like i myself uh i've i've, I've, I've been working remote this whole time since march and mm-hmm. it's crazy we're coming up on that but i've uh spoken with several people i've worked with who uh we have limited capacity like very very limited capacity at our like in like our physical office right now so there are some people who've chosen to go in and a couple of the people i know who choose to go into the office are people who they didn't bring work with them at all historically prior to this they live in like one bedroom or small studio apartments and one of them it was funny he had like no furniture set up to use a laptop and you know start connecting online so you're just like yeah i have this like standing desk at work can i use this standing desk as like a sitting desk on my floor um another person i spoke with he said the same thing he said no i very much believe in having spaces like for example i have my bedroom my bedroom there's a strict rule no electronics go in there so i keep all my electronics in my living room but my living room is my play and relax area. So I only have my living room, my kitchen, and my bedroom. But the only place I can hook up my like my work setup is in the corner of the living room. And that's now mixed up with everything. So I feel like I'm constantly working or I constantly have a work presence. Yeah, that's the hard thing. I feel like people that have been working from home in small apartments, because all of my friends have been going through that as well. Uh, some of them work mm-hmm. for the school, some of them got their own jobs outside of it. It's hard to compartmentalize with the same computer and desk what's work and what's play, and yep. also just be able to turn off and enjoy play when it's not work time. You know, like I, that's something I find as as I've gotten older is like I used to be big into PC gaming, but as I've spent so much time both through schoolwork and college and uh, working on video stuff at my desk for that stuff, I don't want to be at my desk when I want to play a game. I want to be, sure. I want to be in my bed or on a couch. So it's like that's one thing where I, I that's one way I've managed it is whatever I'm with downtime or relaxed time, I'm in the bed. I'm not at my desk, but it's it's hard to. You know, it's hard to hit that balance when you're in such a tiny space. And if I need to be at my desk for something or I want to be at my desk for something, and it's like that that little bit of nagging in my mind said, hey, you should have your notepad open. So I I think the only thing that I've seen that's been really successfully done, and I mean, it takes a lot of willpower for this, I'm sure, but it's I've seen two friends who've done this, but like one of my best friends, um, he uh, right after college, uh, I came with him to pick up a desktop that he was looking at. He was buying a used desktop from one of our friends. He just kind of wanted me to survey it, look at it, see if it was a good deal. It was a phenomenal deal. So he ended up picking it up and he used this straight up like a console. As in, he never deleted anything off of this. He never did any sort of work of any kind. He never even browsed the internet. He had Steam. He had Origin. He might have had one other thing, and he just had games. And he would hook up a controller to it. And he had it in his room hooked up to his TV. And if a controller didn't work, he ended up buying like a cheap keyboard, like wireless keyboard and mouse. Mm-hmm. And he was able to make those work just fine. But his thing was, he didn't have any other purpose. He didn't have any other thing. He never, ever ever used it for any type of personal work or any type of school work um he had a like 400 dollars laptop that's what he did his actual stuff on but he straight up used this computer just like a console just with launchers and that seems to work out pretty well for him that's one thing i'm hoping to do when i move is uh, get a computer set up that's literally just for streaming and recording and then not touch mm-hmm. anything else and then even then uh, have uh, all of my footage on like a network drive so I can just edit from whatever computer. But then if I want to have my laptop and outside of that room and be playing a game with friends or whatever, then I have to worry about that. It's it's just, it's hard to do when you don't have that much space or resources. Of course. Of and I course. think that uh, I've seen like my, my partner uh, is a graphic designer for the school and she has problems with uh, compartmentalizing the work for that, her work for her degree, which the graphic design degree at, at my college is absolutely 
rigorous. It's very, very difficult. So watching her try and balance those two things, like I bought her last year. She loves Persona. I bought her Persona 4 Golden when it came out on PC, and she's like wants to play it so bad, but she can't. She doesn't want to spend more time at her desk. So I'm finally gonna mm-hmm. bring my laptop over, and we're gonna play it on, her, on the TV soon. But it, it's mm-hmm. one of those things where it's like. Uh, it, it's, it, it sucks to not have spaces like that because I think it's very important and people are having to figure out how to grapple with that with the circumstances they're in sure and even I, I will kind of give you a heads up on, on Persona 4 Golden because I had played it it was funny I, I started it like around winter break when I like one year in college and then I pretty much burned through through winter break and it was a good game mind you but at the same time it's just like damn it i'm in school i am going to classes i am doing these tests while i am on a giant four or five week break like a part of me is not getting a break up here in my brain <laughs> she she's liking persona 5 royal a lot that's what i got for christmas uh so we've been playing that together and she's been liking that a lot that one does it differently though really mm-hmm. okay yeah, so yeah, i like think the... she's played four i'm not sure mm-hmm. uh so, so how different is it is it like a real pain in the ass or uh i mean uh, what i did i was just i, I just pulled up a uh, game facts guide and kept mm-hmm. it up on my phone so i would just answer the questions that way but it was still just very much the mindset of okay uh i have this giant break in front of me and i'm spinning it playing a game where i'm going to school every single day <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can only get the the irony of that but i don't know i've, I've played uh i don't know how to, i think it's tokyo xanadu on the vita a while ago uh, i have not played that but i know exactly what you're talking about yeah that game was it's it's i played it in front of her i've never played a persona game myself that's the funny thing is i've, I've only ever watched her play royal um sure. and she said this is basically just persona so <laughs> i'm just like oh, okay cool but yeah that game that game was fun but like i don't honestly i didn't feel i minded it too much i felt like it was uh i don't know maybe it just bugged me a little bit too much because i was on my break but yeah, yeah. that's super fair <laughs> i'm i'm weird with stuff like that i love mundane stuff in video games i love simulators like Mm-hmm. truck driving simulators and flight simulators and stuff like that i absolutely love that stuff so i don't know i feel like it's just uh satisfying to complete sure. the task but without while still being able to like physically relax and not have to go go places and do things mm-hmm. so no totally get that yeah um mm-hmm. it, it's it's interesting to see that uh th- there's such a market for those games like the flight simulator 2020 was an absolute massive success in like the mainstream which is something that you would not suspect from a commercial flight sim mm-hmm. no i i think that was because it got on game pass too so like everybody could play it at yeah that you point. could just try it out without risk i probably would not have bought the game but i because it was on game pass i downloaded it and i probably put about 90 hours into it the first two weeks mm-hmm. absolutely I think it- grabbed me I want to say I, I'd seen this flow around Twitter, and I want to say it was quoted from Modern Vintage Gamer, but I believe he said something like, uh, "Flight Sim is like Animal Crossing for boomers," <laughs> which is like, okay, I, I get it now. I can see that for like the uh, the older generations, but I, it's wild how the new one just people just installed it out of curiosity, and even if they just flew around and saw their house or whatever, yeah. and then stopped. I remember people like uh, people. There was a Twitch thing though. They they landed the plane with uh, chat. Like they did Twitch plays flight sim and landed the plane. Oh my god! It's like, <laughs> I don't know. That's that's really cool. People are finding all these ways to have their own fun in this giant sandbox. Sure. I don't know. Sure, it's it's sure. a cool game. It is. Yeah, I haven't played it, but it it certainly lo- it was impressive to say the least. You need a monster computer to play it. It plays very poorly no on doubt. my 1070 Ti, but. Uh, interesting it, it, i got a 1080 ti so hopefully you probably do a little bit better but it's it's okay. just very 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 heavy and unoptimized just because of how large it is sure. but it's it's definitely a very good game and recommend it good to know yeah so kind of wrapping up here but this is one thing i either discuss or i always ask uh but uh what games have you been playing here recently uh so other than persona 5 royal with my girlfriend uh i've been mm-hmm. playing so i say i have gaming adhd because I like to I try do. things. I have that. <laughs> I like to try things for a few hours and say, "Okay, cool, cool. Have my fun with that and move on." But this weekend, I've been playing Test Drive Unlimited One a lot, a little uh, like the the original one, because I've got that modded 360. I was able to mm-hmm. restore the DLC that was been long delisted, so I've been playing that. Um, I played the Golden Eye remake a little bit on the new console as well. Oh, it's um, so good, isn't it? it? It's wild. It's just it 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 fixes w- the hard parts of playing that game now. Yeah, yeah, the graphics and the controls. I'll tell you that ruined my sleep schedule when it dropped. <laughs> I <laughs> it's imagine that good. 
Because because you're a little older than me, I think, right? So you, you, that's like your childhood, right? Uh, yeah, but even so, even in my childhood, I got to it late. But I've always had an appreciation. It's actually one of those things I never realized how much I loved that game until the remake did come out. And I was all well, unofficially come out. But yeah, no, it, 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 it to sum up how good it was, it ruined my sleep schedule for a week or two. <laughs> that's uh, that's that's pretty funny. Did you play it with friends yet? Uh, I had played it with one friend and we were just going back and forth on levels. Like we didn't do any actual multiplayer, but I need to get a multiplayer setup going. I never got the experience of multiplayer growing up with that because like, admittedly, I didn't either. We just thought, uh, we just thought facility was really funny because you can shoot people in a bathroom. (laughs) We were like, we were like 10. (laughs) (laughs) I never got to play it because like, it was just, you know, before my time a little bit i was born after it came out which is the funny yeah. thing so it's just like uh i played like golden ice source back in the day and uh then the wii remake which wasn't fantastic but uh i don't know i'm, inter- I'm interested to hope uh hopefully find a uh community playing that game through kai or whatever uh in the near future um mm-hmm. so yeah there's been that and then uh, i don't know i've just kind of been between games lately figuring out i'm doing through the, all the old hot wheels stuff for this video which is very interesting because like these the six hours of movies to watch for it, which was very fun to go back and have that nostalgia <laughs> blast. Um, I never saw the Star Wars film or not Star Wars, the uh, Hot Wheels films. So it, it's wild because they're at one time they're like, yeah, they're intended for children and they're like about racing Hot Wheels cars, but they're also surprisingly dark and sometimes even like gritty. Okay. <laughs> and it's interesting because that's like, ahead of its time for children's animation and they've kind of gone backwards so it's something i'm very interested to like get to explore and write about in the near future because man i i loved those things as a kid and i didn't know how how lucky i was to experience something so unique uh even if it got cut off short because they went over budget which doesn't surprise Mm -hmm. me given the animation (laughs) quality uh they went over budget and they never finished the story so it ends on this massive cliffhanger so lovely (laughs) gotta find out about that if i can but um Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, I've been playing the old Hot Wheels racing games. Uh, like, they play kind of like F Zero in some cases, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Too. What, right what about you? Uh, let's see. So of course, Goldeneye. I've mentioned that, and then that's been about the only game I've finished. Because the other games I've been playing, um, I I've been bringing this up for months, but I'm still not done with it. Uh, I've been playing Ring Fit Adventure at least four or five times a week, which. Mm-hmm that kicks my ass it's <laughs> it's a really it's it, it does its job very well though and i cannot speak highly enough of its praises but it will kick your ass and if it doesn't you're playing it wrong yeah my friend my friend picked it up for a quarantine workout reasons and she said oh, oh my god this great. is the hardest i've ever like worked out and i'm playing a yeah. video game yeah yeah you will cuss and scream at that dragon that dragon is a dick <laughs> sometimes i'm yeah. still curious to try it i don't think i have space for it in my place right now but i, I would love mm. to try it out there sometimes because... yeah yeah try it out their place or when you get your own like bigger place definitely try it i can't recommend it enough oh man it was it was so hard to find for a minute there because i think it's one of those things kind of like animal crossing where it came out at the right time and it was just hard to get your hands on Mm -hmm. um and i remember trying to find that friend a copy of ring fit for her birthday and it was just out of stock everywhere (laughs) and getting scalped on ebay so i don't know yep Yep, I remember at the beginning of quarantine, I think it was uh, the Switch and Ring Fit Adventure were consistently caught, like consistently sold out together in South Korea because everyone had to stay inside. So a lot of South Korean households said, hey, let's pick up a Switch and Ring Fit to actually work out. Yeah, I don't know if it was a problem over where you are, but here switches were out of stock everywhere. Ring Fit was out of stock at yep. every store. If you If you found a store that had it, it would be out of stock by the end of the day. It yep. was wildly hard to get a hold of. So the Switch Lite was kind of okay to find, but nobody wanted the Switch Lite. People mm-hmm. wanted because everyone was stuck at home and they wanted to play on their TV, so they wanted the the full Switch. Yeah, I had some friends manage to get a Switch Lite, but I remember uh, trying to get that Animal Crossing Switch was just oh man, it's finally somewhat possible to get now. It is, yeah. But man, back then I remember people going for a thousand dollars. I've slept through the pre order. Uh, window so i didn't get it and that's happened to me more than one time over the last few years i gotta get get a better alarm i guess totally feel that yeah i've i've stopped trying to i i've completely stopped trying to get a ps5 i don't know when the hell i'm gonna i've just kind of accepted that it's gonna happen when it happens i'm yeah like most of what i want right now is i want the series x uh, and I, i i recognize i can play everything i can play on a series x with my current console so i'm just not bothering for now sure and I figure when they're possible to get without breaking my leg or my or my wallet, then I'll then I'll worry about it. 
Yep. Yep. To everybody listening who doesn't have one, just don't don't pay the scout prices. Just wait. You can wait. It's I, fine. I played through Cyberpunk on a Xbox One X, uh, start to finish, about seventy hours. It was buggy. It crashed if I drove too fast. It was tolerable. <laughs> it was still a great game. Uh, I still really enjoyed it. So, right on. I've I've heard many people say uh, when it's not not working, it's a good game. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's honestly, I didn't have that much issue with bugs it was literally just a reproducible thing if i drove too fast for too long it would crash the dashboard (laughs) consistently and there's also this one part of the city where if you drive through it your character will become naked and t-pose oh well that's nice those are the two bugs i could reproduce everything else was like whatever the 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 (laughs) the, the, uh, delivery box typo was funny though where it says devilry instead of delivery yeah and and i think like there was one sign that said like welcome to night city and night was misspelled yeah (laughs) yeah there was a lot of stuff that got messed up there yeah you don't Um, don't go down that rabbit hole though no 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 no. um but yeah i think the uh the other game so like i i kind of have the adhd thing with gaming as well too where i'll just like hop between different games and one of the things was for whatever reason literally last night i was like screw it i feel like doing a wii u thing for some reason i have this wii u that like this spare wii u that i've pretty much set up like all good to go it just didn't have any games so i started looking through my games and i was like i've had devil's third which i've heard very meh things about but it seems interesting for how many years so sure let me go ahead rip the disc over to the system install it and play it from here and i only played like one level and i've also been playing 13 sentinels which is very good but i'm not done with it because i keep hopping to different games mm-hmm. um 13 Sentinels is really good. Devil's Third, I'm only like one level in. Better than I expected, though. It's kind of weird. It is janky. It's definitely not a $60 or more game. But like, if you go into it for what it is and you kind of treat it as a budget tile, it's like, oh, this is actually some really dumb fun. Like, I enjoy this. I, I kind of thought of it as like, sometimes I want like gaming McDonald's, you know? Absolutely. That's why I play COD. Yeah. And, and I thought of that, too. I was like... I want gaming McDonald's, but I don't want Call of Duty. But I have that same thing where like sometimes like once or twice a year, I want to play Call of Duty and then I just get it out of my system. I'm like, cool, I won't touch this again. Yeah, I definitely get that. And I think there's lots of games like that, especially in the PS3 and Wii U era, where there's just games you can power through in four or five hours and have your fun with and not have to worry about them again. Lots of shooters like that. Um, So I got to ask, because you said you were feeling like doing a Wii U thing. Uh, Yes, do you ever get the feeling where like you want to use a console's controller so you try and find a game to play on it? Uh, no, actually, I have never had that. I, it's, it's like there are times where whatever con- console I get a game on is based on what controller I feel like using that day. So, gotcha. like, I I played Assassin's Creed Four uh, a few weeks ago. I didn't get to finish it or anything, but I played it played a good mm-hmm. amount of it on PS3 because I wanted to use a mm-hmm. PS3 controller. It's sure. just, so yeah, I, I find that with Wii U as well. It's, it's kind of weird. The Wii U's gamepad is really comfy. It is more comfy than it deserves. Yeah, Call of Duty plays actually pretty damn well on it. I was surprised. It does. I'm... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, and the reason why I actually jumped to the Wii U, because I was playing Grand Theft Auto 3 on it. That's my all-time favorite game. Mm-hmm. So, like, I also, I was playing the reverse-engineered, like, version on PC as well, which is immaculate, but I was surprised at how well it played on Wii U. So that's kind of, now I'm remembering. I was really surprised with that. So I was like, let me see what other, like, official games I have on here. And that's when I started revisiting other stuff. So I'm, like, I'm going through some of my other games right now, and I'm messing around with them. But, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at in this weird place. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I, I play more games for one session than I play for more than one, honestly. I just kind of try everything for a little while, and I'll come back to it when I want to. But honestly, gotcha. I just think playing games is fun. And so if it's if, if I enjoy one session with a game, that's, I think, to me, a worthwhile amount of time, even if I don't come back to it. There's nothing wrong with that. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we can go ahead and wrap this up here. This has gone on long. It's been, yeah. it's been a really fun episode. Yeah, um, it's been very th- fun. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, no problem, no problem. But uh, for our last thing here, truly last thing, so uh, I like to pick a keyword that people can use in the comments of the YouTube upload, and if people use this keyword, we'll know we they made it until the end. But since the guest is on here, I always ask the guest. So, oh, Casey, what should the fine people of the YouTube comment section use as a keyword or a phrase so we will know that they made it to the end of this almost two-hour-long episode? Um. You know, I'm a racing game fan girl, so I'm going to say uh, House Real Big. House Real Big? Midnight Club 3. Okay. 
<laughs> all right so if you use that is that a word or is that a term it's a term it's from a it's oh. from a song from midnight club three it's like the menu okay song. okay gotcha because i didn't know if it was going to be just like all one word or what but yeah if you use that term house real big <laughs> in your comments we will know that you made it to the end of this very long episode of mario's minute uh aside from that i guess casey do you have anything else to say or add on here anything you want to plug well uh thanks for having me of course and then plug my channel of course just casey oh, if yeah. you scroll past the country music you'll find me um <laughs> I, my, my, Wait, seriously? Yeah, because there's this girl named Casey Musgraves or Musgraves, how you say it, and she's the first result, but I'm the second. Oh, one. yeah, but I guess like I'm such a big XX elite XX gamer that like if I just look up Casey like on on my channel, I see like your channel and then a couple of your videos. Uh, then there's NBA Young Boy, and then there's <laughs> Casey Musgraves. <laughs> that's pretty good um yeah i think if i search it i, I get uh, her first but um yeah so if you search me there's that i make videos about all kinds of games and ports and weird stuff like that and uh yeah hot wheel stuff coming soon right on well we'll look forward to that hot wheel stuff all right all right well anyways uh this is mr mario signing off thank you all for listening and watching everyone until next month